Greetings my fellow YouTubians. Uh, apologies for not having made a video for ages, but I've been mean, having computer problems. The problem seems to be that I can't get any sound out of the thing. Which means I can't use the video editing software and I also can't watch videos, so I haven't been able to watch a single video since just after Christmas. Um, I hope to get the computer fixed at some point, but uh, so far no luck. Anyway, so what I'm doing now is attempting to put together a video in one take, which is not something I'm used to, but here goes. Uh, also, I'd like to give a big thank you to Bionic Dance for the shout out just before Christmas. That's resulting in a lot of new subscribers. So thank you very much to Bionic Dance, to all my new subscribers, um, and also to my old subscribers for continuing to find my stuff interesting. Anyway, I have a day off work today, Mrs. Finlag is otherwise occupied, and I've been able to do something I've been wanting to for a long time, and that is to visit a wind farm. You may be able to hear that it's quite a windy day today. So, here are some absolutely massive turbines that make me feel very small, and the speed they're whizzing around at is quite scary. These, each of these tips, I don't know how fast that's going, but uh, I wouldn't like to get in the way of it. Also, you might notice that the blades are angled in such a way that uh, it's not going as fast as it could, because it's more windy than it needs to be to generate the electricity. As far as I know, these things are 2 megawatts, which is roughly the equivalent of a thousand kettles. Well, this wind farm has 12 wind turbines. We are at a place called Benatikil on the Isle of Skye. Now, over there you can see McLeod's tables near Dunvegan. And there are, if you can still hear me, there are the other turbines. One of them's not running today for whatever reason I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm taking shelter behind this building because it is very windy and very cold. So, I will probably make uh, a couple more videos, but because I can't edit them together, I'll end up posting them as separate videos. So, thanks for watching. This thing is scarily huge. It's so windy on the other side that you won't hear a word, so I won't bother trying to say anything. But anyway, there we go. We're underneath the steps. pictures in high definition. So, this is my little contribution to Creative Commons.
there's some nice clouds over there. I'd love to be able to do a time lapse on some of these, but uh, I don't have the time or the tripod. So we're heading away from the wind farm now. It's still nice. The weather has been horrendous, but uh, I've been really lucky. Well chuffed that I was able to come up here today. Through the forestry plantation up to these trees are lodgepole pine and Sitka spruce, both um, North American tree species, which uh, we use in the UK quite a bit for forestry because they grow well on relatively poor soils. As far as I know, these will be about 15 years old or thereabouts, so it'll be another 15 or 20 years before they are harvested for the timber. There are sometimes talk about these wind turbines, or wind turbines in general, uh, being switched off because they're generating too much power. Um, now there's something that, in principle, I think would be a great idea, something to do, which might not work great economically, but ec economics, the economy, as far as I'm concerned, is not the most important thing in this world. The idea I have, what I would like to see is, when these things are generating too much power, some of that power, some of that power could be used to uh, separate water into hydrogen and oxygen uh, by means of electrolysis. And if that were done, if there was an electrolysis plant here, or better still, at the wind farms which are right next to the sea, or even in the sea. By doing that, and basically transferring the power out of the national grid, which is where it normally goes, and into a custom-made electrolysis plant, you could then bottle the hydrogen and use that for transportation. Honda already make a car, I don't know if they still do, but certainly a couple of years ago they made a car called, I think it's the FCX Clarity, and that is a hydrogen fuel cell electric car, uh, which would be an ideal candidate for running off surplus wind power. So the difference between something like this and a coal-fired power station is it takes a while to start and stop one of those things. There are huge furnaces, enormous heat, high pressure steam driving the turbines, but uh, these things you can, you know, they, they may continue to turn, but you, you can just switch them off. So rather than waste the wind, I would like to see the surplus wind being used to generate hydrogen. I don't know if you can hear me at all, but uh, that one, that turbine there, has its blades turned edge on into the wind. It is moving slightly, but that's the way they stop them. They turn the blades so that they are edge on into the wind. It's hard to hold the camera steady at this zoom. Um, and it just sits still, generating power. So there you have it. That hill there is uh, one of McLeod's tables near a place called Dunvegan. So, one out of twelve of these turbines is not running at the moment.